This is Houston. You are a go for staging. Ralph, right? we're 10 seconds away from this. S4B. Stand by for mode 4 capability. Now, this should be the firing of the S4B in just 15 seconds. Mode 4 and Apollo 11 could get into orbit using the service propulsion system. PDQ 602 up here. Altitude is 100 miles, downrange 883 miles. PDQ 602 and ignition. There it is, ignition right on top. Right on the top. We're right on the top. Thrust is go, 11. 700 PSI, 697, there we are. And we have a good third stage now. now. This burn lasts two minutes and 25 seconds, and that brings the vehicle to its orbital speed of 17,500 miles an hour, up a couple of thousand miles an hour from where it was before. 123,128 feet per second. Downrange 1,000 miles, altitude 101 miles. D1 is on, num on number five, if you know. Up. This third stage is a J2 engine, developed 225,000 pounds. Houston, at 10 minutes, you are go. But, uh, All right, you're 11, go. I think I misidentified the capsule communicator a moment ago. G1's on line five, Chuck. The man uh, who is communicating with the astronauts from the mission control in Houston is Bruce McCandless. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Predicted cutoff at 11 plus 42. Over. 1142, Rich. Downrange 1175 miles. Velocity 24,190 miles feet per second. Altitude 102 nautical miles. All right. There is former President Johnson. We're going. Saying uh, well, well, goodbye to well, a well, few well. of his friends in the uh, stands. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go at 11. The sharing with Vice President Agnew. Uh, the position of honor here. He's the official representative of Vice Pre uh, of President Nixon. Vice President Agnew uh, is the top uh, official of the administration here. should get confirmation of orbital insertion miles now. in about 15 seconds now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 101.4 by 103.6. Mm -hmm. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. 1.4 by 103.6, uh, that would be in nautical miles. Uh, the orbit uh, for the uh, spacecraft uh, has been confirmed. They are in Earth orbit. They've made the first big jump on their trip to land on the moon, and Vice President Agnew is seen there on your screen. Houston, the booster is safe. All right, Roger. That's another good sign when we see the booster is safe. It's quite significant to us. It means that the destruct system has been shut off by a command from the ground so that the that S-4B cannot uh, destroy the spacecraft. Uh -huh. if it's, a, it's designed, of course, if we uh, abort away uh, to disperse the propellants in that S-4B. And we have an escape route, of course, from the escape tower and war with burning away from it. It's kind of nice to know it's shut off. At this point, uh, of course, uh, now that they are in Earth orbit, uh, their return it could be a, a, a normal return uh, to a selected landing spot by jettisoning the S-4B third stage and then going on their service propulsion system engine. Just as we were in the Earth orbital flights. Right. The very same thing. So uh, this, this first... Uh, always dramatic and uh, obviously with the great explosive potential of all of that fuel, the dangerous uh, launch phase is passed 
and Apollo 11 is on the way. Are looking good. Over. That's Tom Stafford there. Yes, it is. Now, Tom, uh, Tom, of course, the pilot on uh, the, the commander on Apollo 10 that paved the way for this flight uh, with uh, Vice President Agnew and his party. Tom has been kind of the chief briefing officer for the VBVIPs in these last couple of days. I see him coming in and out of the uh, hotel there in uh, uh, the Hilton, and he's, uh, he's uh, constantly running off to make some more notes to brief another important visitor. I think Tom would probably say V cubed IP. <laughs> Well, uh, we remarked earlier that it got to that with uh, all of the foreign dignitaries, the congressmen, the cabinet members, the senators, uh, the governors, and mayors uh, here. Uh, this is Houston Vanguard LOS at uh, 1535, AOS Canaries at uh, 1630. Over. That report is on the okay. LOS. We still have. LOS is the loss of signal from the Vanguard. That's uh, one of the tracking ships out in the Atlantic uh, to the acquisition of signal from the Canary Island. from the instrument unit of the third stage of Saturn V. Here on the ground, we're showing an orbit of 102.5 by 99.7 nautical miles. Uh, the flight dynamics officer, Dave Reed, wants to uh, get some radar tracking to refine this orbit, and he, he will report a uh, refined orbit after more radar tracking. That's very near nominal, uh, didn't it, Wally? 102.5 by 99.7, that's almost 116 miles, uh, uh, statute that's miles. It. Yes, high. it is. I think you'll notice the figures differ, and it's because the radar data hasn't been smooth yet. The onboard data is probably more nearly correct at this point. The 101.4, 103.6. Right. It really doesn't, uh, it's not critical at this point, uh, the difference uh, in those of one or no. two miles in the Earth orbit, uh, as long as they're in approximately the right position over the Pacific on that second orbit uh, to fire off the S-4B third stage and boost their speed from 17 1,500 to 25,000 miles an hour, uh, which will put them on their way to the moon. That moon trajectory speed is uh, uh, just enough to uh, escape uh, enough of the Earth's gravity to get to be captured by the moon's gravity, to be brought around the far side of the moon, and then with enough uh, inertial speed to come back to Earth but not go into moon orbit, yeah. nor be going so fast that you bypass the moon and are not captured by its gravity and go on out to the sun. Which is what the S-4B will do. Yes, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. well, right. Here we are. Yeah, those figures translate, uh, the last figures, to 118 by 120 statute miles. A little bit higher than uh, they had calculated, I think, but uh, by, by uh, less than a couple of miles and uh, well within range. So we've seen a, another beautiful Saturn launch, but this one will never be known in history or by those of us who watched it as just another Saturn V launch. Not if all goes well, because this is the flight uh, from which man will first set foot on the moon. Uh, we almost glibly toss that line away now, man on the moon, but by golly, just think it over. CBS News color coverage of the launch day of Apollo 11 will continue in a moment. Apollo 11 is on the way, riding that uh, pillar of flame from the Saturn V uh, into the skies out there 250,000 miles away to where the moon is waiting for man's first arrival. Flight to take uh, three days and uh, the uh, spacecraft to reach there on Saturday, the landing to take place on Sunday and Neil Armstrong to set foot on the moon at 2.21 a.m. on Monday morning. The first critical phase of this flight is over, the launch. They're now in Earth orbit. They are now over the Atlantic, approaching the coast of Africa, and in touch uh, shortly with the Canary tracking station, when we may hear some more from them. 
and then out over Africa, the Indian Ocean, past Australia, and back around for the first to trip across the United States. On the second trip around, uh, they, will, uh, they will launch themselves out toward the moon itself. On the first pass around, on that uh, completion of their first orbit, when they're just about overhead here, uh, for the first time, we have been told we can expect a transmission from their color on board uh, television camera at one hour and 29 minutes into the flight, which would be a minute or so after 11 o'clock. 